Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to look at this robot arm. This is my Cobot Pi robot arm from Elephant Robotics Company. I got this robot arm for free. I'm going to keep it after this review, but Elephant Robotics does not pay me for this review, so I can say whatever I want. This robot arm is quite small. The arm span is 350 millimeters, but I think in the case of this configuration of the robot arm, it's more relevant to talk about the distance between the shoulder and the wrist. So here I would say it's distance between the second joint and the fourth joint. And in this case, this distance is 206.4 millimeters. And it has the Raspberry Pi 4 at the base. To run this robot arm, I would need a keyboard and HDMI screen. And with this robot arm, you can buy some accessories like gripper or suction cup. But we're going to talk about them later. I should say that it's quite easy to run this robot arm. It's quite easy to program it and there are multiple ways how to run it. I think the easiest ways are to use program Blockly or to use the Python. Let's start with the Python because this is the easiest for me. And you need just these three lines in order to connect to your robot arm. And afterwards uh, with this you can do some stuff. Like for example you can change this light. So now it's green, let's put it red or some other color. You can also check the angle of each joint. Let's put it in some wearable and we can move our robot to the home zero position with the speed 50%. Cool. Let's do this one more time. And with the command to release all servos, we can disable the robot arm. If you prefer to do drag and drop instead of coding, you can use Blockly, like here. Works perfectly fine. Apparently they have implemented the inverse kinematics in the Python module, so let's test this. For this I'm going to put the robot arm in the several position, read the coordinates and afterwards run the robot arm through these coordinates. And this is going to be the coordinates in the real space, not in the joint space. I'm going to use these boxes for the reference. Now I will put these coordinates in the Python code and let's see how it's going to work. And I should say that I put the parameters for the linear motion between these points. Run. Okay. It goes to the first point. It wait. I don't know why. It goes to the second point. To the third point. It wait again. I don't know why. It works, it moves a little bit shaky, but it works. And you can ask why I have not one, but two robot arms. Two identical robot arms. And this is because I had some adventure with the first one. So when I started to run it, it worked quite fine at the first time, but afterwards it split over here. So it disassembled. And I asked the Elephant Robotics, what is it? What should I do? And they told me that probably this is the damage during the shipping and they sent me the second one. But afterwards I look inside of this robot arm and I found out that this was not a shipping problem. This was a problem that they forgot to put the screw which holds this piece and this piece. And basically this entire robot arm was holding only on the GPIO connector of the Raspberry Pi and on this sticker. I mean, how you can forgot to put the screws? Anyway, they sent me the second robot arm which does have the screws. And this one I repaired myself. So now I have the two. Next, I've tested the payload and the precision of this robot arm. According to the specification, the payload is 250 grams and the precision is 0.5 plus minus 0.5 millimeters. So to test the payload, I attached 250 grams weight at the end of the robot arm and apparently it handles quite well and it works quite perfectly with this payload. As we have one video without payload, another video with maximum payload, we can superimpose one on another to see the deviation due to this payload. By the way, it's normal to have the deviation due to the payload. So 
So after I tested the precision and here of course I have not seen the 0.5 millimeter precision. I saw more like a plus minus 3 millimeter precision. So with this robot arm you can easily have the deviation of 6 millimeters, which is not really surprising because this robot arm has the hobby style servos, quite uh, cheap servos, at least with the cheap uh, mechanics. And that's why it has quite significant play and backlash. I have also decided to show you a little bit what is inside. So this is a big servo of the shoulder. You see there is three wires coming to the servo and three wires coming out from the servo. And this is a small servo from the wrist. And the good news is that they use a bearing in the joint to support it. This is really nice. And also I should say that the wire management inside the robot arm is well done. Next I've tested the gripper and uh, this was a really huge disappointment. And I think the main problem of this gripper is uh, the design flaw. So inside this gripper there is two gears and these two gears they are too close to the side of the gripper and so they wrap on the side of the gripper. I contacted the Elephant Robotics and they sent me the second gripper but the problem is that it has exactly the same design flow. Another thing that this gripper is uh, super slow. I think it's the slowest gripper I ever saw. And at the same time uh, it has a lot of play. It does not close completely so it left like 5 millimeter gap when it closed so you cannot grab uh, really small objects. And I think the only advantages of this gripper is that it's a lightweight and it's easy to use in the software. And another disadvantage is that it's quite expensive. It's $100 and I think it should cost like $20. $100 is too expensive for this kind of gripper with a single servo. So now I'm going to open this gripper. Watch carefully. It's going to be super fast. Go. Yeah, it's opened. Now try to close it. Go. You see this jerky motion? I think this is because these gears inside the rub on the internal structure on these cylinders. This is amazing. How bad is this gripper? Really amazing. By the way, it does not close completely. Look. This is a gripper closed. After this gripper I have tested the suction cup and the first surprise I had here is that uh, the commands from the tutorial they don't work with the suction cup. I don't know why I tried multiple channels, I tried multiple times but it does not work for me. But because the suction cup is controlled just through the GPIO connector of the Raspberry Pi it was quite easy to write my own part of the program in order to run it. The suction cup works uh, surprisingly well. It has a quite strong suction force. There is a spring over here, which I think a really good idea and it helps a lot. The disadvantage is that it's expensive again. And also the wiring is not really well made for this kind of price. And this is how the pump module looks inside. So there is a pump over there and there is a small tiny valve. Now let's talk about pros and cons of this robot arm. I think the main advantage is that the wiring of all servos are made inside the robot arm. Like this the design is quite clean. Another advantage is that it's easy to program and to use this robot arm. And at the end over here there is an atom module with some channels which you can control. So like this when you design your own end effector you can use this channel in order to communicate with your end effector. Which I think is very practical and like this you don't need to wire externally the wires from your end effector. Another advantage is that at each joint there is an additional bearing to support this joint. So there is a servo and this additional bearing. I think this makes the robot arm a little bit more solid. And for the disadvantages I think that this robot arm is quite expensive because basically this is Raspberry Pi 4 plus 6 servos. And this price for the Raspberry Pi 4 and 6 servos I think it's a little bit too high. There is no torque feedback on these servos. There is a position feedback but no torque feedback. At the same time it's still uh, they call it Cobot. And I think this is because Cobot it's uh, actually the robot which can work collaboratively with the human and which is safe for the human. And this one is safe for the human because it's small and not very powerful. 
and it would be nice uh, if it's uh, collaborative because it has the torque feedback and it can do like collision detection. As I told, the precision of this robot arm is not 0.5 millimeters plus minus 0.5 millimeters. It's more like plus minus 3 millimeters. So you can easily get the 6 millimeters deviation from the desired position and from the actual position. Yeah, this is quite high, but uh, this is what uh, you get with the uh, usual servos, with the hobby style servos. And another disadvantage, I found that there are some errors in the documentation. For example, I found the errors in the drawing of the end of this part and drawing of the base. Like this, if you would like to design your own end effector or your own base, you need to be careful and really check these drawings because there are couple of errors there. Another problem. Most of the time Python program works perfectly fine. But sometime, I think around 2% of the time, so quite rare, the robot arm performs the motion incorrectly. I have no idea why and here is the example. Here the first move was wrong, but the other was ok. It seems like one servo missed one command. I saw this behavior several times with different joints, with different Python programs and with both robot arms. So I think this robot arm is kind of special. I think it's quite expensive, at the same time it's not very solid in my opinion. I think it could be used for the education. But at the same time, as it's not very solid robot arm, I don't think that it will last long in the classroom. So I think it would work for the education, but you should be really careful with it. Yeah, and me personally, I would say that it's good as a toy. So if you have a lot of money and you don't mind to spend this kind of money for a toy, you can buy it. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Please put the like to this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Huge thank you to people who support me via Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. Thanks to them, this channel is still exist. So you are the best. As usual, stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time.